Welcome back to today's build. I'll be your guide to this wonderful game we all love. Let's get started. Today's deck is a wild ride. Its name is Thalion the Gitrog Monster, and this is Hungry Hungry Swamp Hippos. First Strike and Death Touch is a powerful combination of keywords on offense and defense, but our commander's attack trigger does the most when we use them proactively. Because the Entering Tapped ability does the most when it sees the most creatures and lands enter, our commander generates value over time, so we'll want to play them as soon as possible. Once they're in play, our commander creates a resource imbalance that makes enemy creatures and lands worse. And since we can play extra lands each turn, our land count gets a boost, capitalizing on that disparity much like on original Phyrexian Praetor. So it surprises me that a lot of these builds focus on sacrificing those lands and countering the advantage that our commander builds on, rather than capitalizing. It's an easy mistake to make though, given that the original Gitrog definitely pushes that kind of build. But look closely. Gitrog rewards you for each land going into the graveyard from anywhere for any reason with no ceiling, while our commander definitely does not. Meanwhile, our creatures don't get any kind of bonus, so sacrificing them doesn't negate any of our advantages. Moreover, there are plenty of creatures that are good at and want to be sacrificed, while there are only four lands that do this. So I think we're much better off sacrificing our creatures while leaning on our lands for mana while weaponizing a graveyard full of creatures rather than lands. And like Wilson, we really only need to sacrifice one creature each turn, so we don't necessarily need to make a ton of tokens. Instead, if we lean on non-token sacrifices, we can pivot into reanimator value engines, and access to Yuri Ultimatum turns those reanimator engines into reanimator finishes. Right away, these cards are clearly remnants of a Gedrog monster deck, but that's not what we're trying to do here since it negates part of our advantage. Ordinarily, this is where I'd offer suggestions for what to replace these cards with, but nearly every other card that I'm cutting from the EDH rec list is getting cut for the same reasons. So to save some time, we'll just call this a total deck overhaul and move on to the rest of the build. So what do our lands look like? Since our commander lets us play multiple lands each turn, the Ravnica Bounce lands are a spectacular inclusion, allowing us to always make that second land drop similarly to a kind of free cultivate. And since we're sacrificing non-token creatures, these MDFC lands also play really well with our strategy. Not to mention that if we play them as a land early, we can get them back as spells later with those bounce lands. So what's our timeline? Turn 1, we'll play any of these mana dorks, and use our next two turns to play a suite of discard dorks, as well as fill our graveyard with creatures while putting lands into our hand. Then we'll deploy our commander and drop an extra land into play. Next, we'll attack enemy resources and pivot into filling our graveyard. But we're not using this mill to find lands, we're using it to fill up on creatures. After refilling our hand and digging for our win conditions, we'll recover any pieces that we milled and finally begin to close things out. With a growing stockpile of creatures in our graveyard, mass reanimation is a tremendous swing in our favor. But our real crown jewel is pairing Death Bloom Ritualist with Staff of Domination to create infinite mana, life, and card draw before deploying all the creatures from our deck and graveyard against our opponents and with their hands emptied thanks to our discard effects, they will be helpless against the assault. Yeah. 
This deck is slower, asking you to impede your opponents and capitalizing on resource disparities to buy time to find your win conditions. It's also resilient, disruptive, and resourceful enough to play with the best of them. A very special thanks to all my amazing patrons. When I started this channel, I wanted to talk about deck building decisions with my videos, but in practice what ends up happening is that I talk for 30 minutes about all the nuance of a deck, which is longer than I'm comfortable with posting to YouTube. Here, patrons can request priority deck techs, access extended discussions on their favorite decks, in-depth guides on complex game actions, and more. So if you enjoy this content, consider becoming a patron today. One of the things my patrons have made possible is a special series of deck techs that I'm really excited to show off to you guys. When I finally get them all uploaded, I'll be giving away a special collection of altars and tokens that I've made, corresponding to each deck on the channel. For example, for the Merkle Lord of Bones deck, the prize is a set of double-faced altars of the most prominent cards in the deck, whose backsides are set in the constellation frame with updated text to show that they're acting as enchantments now. For every thousand views on each video, I'll increase the prize pool for that deck. All you have to do to be eligible to win is be subscribed to the channel. Consider supporting the channel today. If you like this video, here are some of the decks I'm working on next, so if you like what you see, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any, and check out the playlist in the top left for more. Thanks for watching!